Alright everyone, today we're going to be building this sign. It's a metal plate, the letters offset an inch and a half forward on small metal studs. So now that all the letters have been cut on the plasma table, I've got to come back in and chip and grind off all the dross to give them a nice finished look. And then I'll be using this 1 8 inch rod to offset them forward of the background by an inch and a half. That will give the look the customer is wanting and the letters will have a shadow. After that, everything gets primed and painted and it will be ready for install. One of the best ways to get a lot of dross off is just take the piece and bang it off the table. Most of the dross will just fall off. See? There's barely anything left now to grind off. This is that anti-spatter compound. Once you spray it on, just go away from it for a while. The stuff is nasty and gives you a headache. So in order to set the letters off from the sign at the same height and hold them in place while I'm welding down the studs, I'm going to use these little magnets. They have a flat spot on the top. They're an inch and a half, which is the offset I want to have. Makes life easy. Okay, so now you can see that the stud right here is welded down to the back plate, goes up through the letter. It's not welded on the back. Instead, it's welded from above. That weld will get ground down and probably have to be touched up again with more weld to get a nice solid bond and to make it look right. Good job, Richard. Put this piece on backwards. Luckily, I haven't welded it down yet. So what I'm gonna do is tweak each letter until they're perfect. Alright, I call that good, but if the customer wants it changed once it's installed, you've seen, just adjust it into place. Alright, so this sign is effectively done now. The studs are on the back, which will hold it to the existing frame. And the front's all put together. So now I'm going to prime the back of it, let it sit for 20-25 minutes to dry, and then I'll be uh, ready to paint the front.
so now that it's been primed, I'm going to sand any areas that look like they need it with a uh, 120 grit pad and then give it one more coat of primer. out very little paint per area it probably takes five or ten coats to get an actual complete coat which is why I can keep moving around the side and keep spraying it without building up so much paint that you get runs I have it adjusted so it's putting the paint out with a it's almost feathery or dust like which gives it a texture that is what the client wants for this sign And because this spray gun has put the paint out in such a dispersed pattern, I'm also getting the back of the letters. I don't know that I'll be able to show you that, but the letters are getting painted on the back as well. The sign is finally dried to a nice hard finish. Now we're going to cover the sign in sand, except for the parts that we want to recolor, which are just the letters. The whole reason we're using sand is so I don't have to spend three hours taping off the entire sign. So this is just regular playground sand, and I'm just going to put it all over the sign in a nice light coating to act as a protection from when I'm spray painting from any overspray getting on the white. So just very lightly brush the sand off. You don't want to use any pressure, you might scratch the paint. Now I'm going to come in with a hammered texture paint. It's just any random colors I'm going to be going over it. This just give the uh, letters a little bit of texture so they catch the light from different angles so you'll see the sign better as you dry it past it. It is really important with this hammered paint is that you pick a direction and you do that for the whole letter. You can change in between letters, but if you spray part of the letter this way and then part of it this way, you will see that in the finish. So now that the hammered finish is just, is, man. <laughs> All right. So now that the hammered finish is dry to the touch on here, it's gonna blow off any dust that's gotten on it from wind or me messing with it, and then finish it with the final color. So the most sensitive color on here is the green for this square up in the top corner. It's gonna show anything through it real easily. So I'm gonna keep going over that with coats, cover it, and then go back to the gray, which is why I didn't really worry about the overspray here. So you have to put at least four coats of paint on a sign like this because these letters are about a tenth of an inch thick, which means they have a side that's going to be plainly visible and that needs paint on it. All right, so hopefully at this point you understand the reasoning behind using the sand to protect the underlying background color of the sign. This sand sits here, collects any of the overspray, and it just turns into a film on top of the sand, which is super easy to get rid of. Let's give it a shot. I hope you just saw that. The wind blew the cardboard box that I had over the screen onto the rest of the sign. There's no good way to deal with this. Uh, fortunately, what I'm about to do is let the paint completely set hard and then try and get the sand off of it without it ruining the paint. I'm probably going to have to come back and touch up the coat over it. Once that's done, if I have to, I will sand off anything that needs sanding off. Just dealt with the sand that blew onto here on the box flicked off of this green covering this green area and the only place where it did any damage to the paint is one little chip right here on this C. I'm gonna dust over that with a new coat and it'll be gone. So now that all the paint is done I need to get all the sand off of here. I'm gonna rake most of it into the little tub that I keep all the sand in and the rest of it I'm just going to blow off with a leaf blower. This is what you end up getting from the sand. It's just a thin film of sand and paint and that's all the cleanup you have. No tape, no other stuff to deal with. Nice and easy. The 
new sign is totally mounted, it's leveled, it's even. What we need to do is come back in and bondo these holes from the previous installation so that when we retexture the back of this uh, plate, it'll look presentable. So we're here, we've got to sand off the bondo from yesterday and then go ahead and put the uh, final coat of paint on the back of this sign and we'll be good to go. All right, so I've went ahead and laid out blankets just so we don't get any overspray on the concrete. And we're gonna go ahead and paint. The existing frame has been painted from its slightly off-white original color to the exact same shade of white that we used for the front of the sign. Uh, any little dings or anything that happened during installation have been touched up and it's all set. So this one is done. Please let me know in the comments if you like seeing as much detail in my videos as I put in them. When I watch the videos that other makers put out, I like to see the detail that goes into what they do because I like to try and learn from them. But if that's not what you're interested in, I can definitely pare them down a little bit. I've kind of been thinking about doing it anyway. Thanks.